walked in darkness have seen great light. For those who lived in a land of deep shadows, light. The joy of a great celebration, sharing rich gifts and warm greetings. For a child has been born for us. The gift of a son for you and for me. His names will be Amazing Counselor, Strong God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace, and there will be no limits to the wholeness that he brings. There we go. I am on. Well, good morning. Let everybody settle in and we'll wait for Jack to finish over there. <laughs> oh, happy new year. Amen. That's uh, something that uh, you wouldn't get from looking at the bulletin. Um, I don't know how I did that, but anyways, it's still Christmas, obviously, on the bulletin. But do you like the little, the little red tractor? I did that for Tom. <laughs> Have you ever done that, like tractors in the snow? <laughs> Is it fun? <laughs> um... Well, hey, uh, a, lot has, a lot has happened in the last week, and we have some announcements and things, but first of all, I just want to say that everybody probably knows Shirley went home to be with the Lord, and uh, it's bittersweet. Uh, sad that she's not with us, but it's, it's a, we rejoice that she is, she is more alive right now than she was 24 hours 48 hours ago so I rejoice in that and pray for the family and then we discovered too uh, I think um, it was uh, Robin who let me know uh, to check the Yoder cult page I think Jane helped her see that that Harold Judy passed away uh, also on the 30th uh, and um, if you look in the bulletin I think I put that on there that his uh, his viewing will be Wednesday and Thursday, and then the funeral will be Thursday at Yoder Kolb. And so uh, there'll be some details coming on Shirley's stuff, and we'll, I'll, I'll post that once we know that. And, and of course, you can go check the, the website and, and get that information. But um, so that happened. Um, next week is... Um, going to be our planning meeting and I know there's just a handful of us here but if you care about what we're going to do next year it would be helpful to have you because what we do is we take a calendar and then we mark out all the things that we're we're committed to doing for the year 
uh, all the all the the big major stuff, and that helps me because uh, obviously you can tell with the bulletin. I'm not on top of it completely, but if I can see it, then I can you know when we can plan it and do it and get it done. And and I want your your help. And so right after church on Sunday, we'll go down in the basement. We'll do the planning meeting, and there'll be pizza from. I'm hoping, I, I just thought Pizza Hut's probably not open right now in Ligonier. I don't know, I have to find that out. But the goal is to have a pizza, to have pizza. You go down and you get pizza and we plan. And we'll be out in an hour. It doesn't take long to, to get through the stuff. We might have a little dialogue about, do we want to do this or not do this? Or maybe we should do this. And, and so that's helpful for me. So that's coming up. Um... Guess that's it. Do you guys have any announcements? <laughs> I tell you what, though, if you if uh, the football games, the two the two big ones yesterday were absolutely nuts. If you'd have said TCU was going to beat Michigan, I would have told you you were crazy, and that happened. And then Ohio State beating Georgia. Uh, but then I, I understand he missed like a 50-yard field goal right there at the end, the Ohio State kid did. So, and I feel bad for him, I, you know, just to have, the, to have that happen, to be, you're not responsible for losing the game. But people put that on themselves, don't they? You know, I, I feel horrible that I got the date wrong on the bulletin. And I don't know if I can live with that. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm, I'm going to milk that for the rest of the, Okay. So let's, uh, today's going to be a special service. We're going to do something a little different than we've done in the past, and you're going to love it or hate it, one of the two. So, um, but that being said, let's get started with some prayer. Let's go before the Lord and invite him to be part of what we're doing. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for New Year's Day. The, this reminder that, that uh, old balances are canceled, and, and we get to establish new balances. And I pray this, uh, Lord, as we begin this time together that you would you would do more than we could immeasurably more than we could ask or imagine in 2023 that you that you would pour out so much blessing in these people's lives in this church's lives in our lives that we couldn't contain it that we couldn't handle it i pray for healing where it needs to happen and hope where there needs to be hope and and joy and all the good things we live in a world where oftentimes the reality of it breaks our own hearts. And so we pray for that peace that passes all understanding which guards our hearts in Christ Jesus. Be with us today and lead us today as we commit ourselves to you and ask you to move powerfully in the midst and in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Worship team, come on up and we'll... We'll get it going. Bless you. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a good coffee. Please stand. Our first song is Angels We Have Heard on High. Am I doing that right? Mm-hmm. I, I can't That's get it. Hang good. on. Angels we have heard on high Sweetly singing o'er the plains And the mountains in reply Echo back their joyous strains. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Oh, 
tidings be which inspire your heavenly song. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Christmas. No one 
scripture and then uh, I'm going to save the Lord's prayer till a little bit later uh, so if you would follow along with me in your bulletin second chronicles seven fourteen. if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land uh, Lord we ask a blessing on the reading of your word and the meditations of my heart ask all these things in Jesus name amen you, you can be seated little ones come on up couple of guys whoo couple of guys well here I got the candy the good stuff some coffee do you guys have your coffee with you you guys drink coffee no not yet have you had coffee you have? Is it, was it any good? No? Wasn't any good? All right. Do you, do you guys, what did you get for Christmas? A hand lamp? A head, oh, like you put on your head and you can go outside. I love those. Although Jen doesn't let me wear mine. I, we go camping and I would put on my headlamp. She thinks it's a miner lost in the woods. I, but um, anyways. What did you get for Christmas? A remote? A remote fire truck. That's cool. Wow. Does the ladder go up on it? No, there's no ladder. There's no ladder? Oh, it's a monster fire truck. Or is it a monster truck? A monster truck. I see. So it's a monster truck that looks like a fire truck. So it's like a, a fire truck on steroids. It's all jacked, like swole. I'm a big fire truck. Look at me. Okay. Um, <laughs> I got a Lego Iron Man with uh, like a suit. He, he gets in and he's wearing like this big suit that I got to put together. I don't normally get Legos, but I got Legos this Christmas. I did get, I don't know, were you here this Sunday? I showed the commercial of the dog. The, little, the, the woman got a pet dog, puppy, and then she gave her husband a truck. I gave Jen a puppy for Christmas. She got a, a, a golden retriever named Barkley, and Jen got me a truck. Actually, she got me a Jeep. It was a Matchbox Jeep. It does? Oh, you see that commercial all the time. Yeah, it's nonstop. Yeah, it's a, it's a happening commercial. That's the beauty of advertising. Um, so I got a Jeep, and then it fell off the place where I put it and the dog ate it the dog ate my Jeep anyways all right let me ask you a question the things that you got for Christmas did you want them before you got it did you want it or did you not know you were getting that I'm going somewhere with this did you is it possible this happens at Christmas sometimes we, we make a Christmas list or we ask our parents or we hint. We hint and say, you know, uh, I do this with Jen. I would really like to have a Jeep. 
and um, and then I leave like pictures of Jeeps around the house, and then um, I probably uh, I don't know do you know there's no Jeep music, but um, do, do you ever like leave clues that you want something? Did you like leave like some batteries laying around like? Hey, it'd be great if I had a light to put these batteries in. No? No? So did you guys kind of ask for the things that you got for Christmas? No? No. Did you ask for anything for Christmas? What did you ask for? An electric helicopter? Did you get one? I'm sorry. Did you did you ask for anything for Christmas? Something you really wanted? Uh, oh, a bow, like to shoot deer with? Oh, a toy one that you could just shoot your mom and dad with, like a toy to play to play with. That'd be fun. Did you get it? No. Okay. Well, you know, this is a great opportunity. We don't always get what we want, do we? But uh, do you know what asking in advance for something is like? Can you guess what that's like? In the church, we do one thing where we, we ask God for stuff sometimes, right? And do we always get it? No, we don't always get it. Uh, but sometimes we do, right? But if you never ask... You can't what? Yeah, if you never ask, you can't get it. And so we're going to talk about prayer. Actually, we're going to do more. We're going to actually pray today. Have you ever prayed? You have? Have you prayed? Yeah. We're going to, we're going to do some praying today. I have to admit, when I was probably a little bit older than you guys, when I went to church, we had a, we had a lengthy time of prayer in the church service. And I'm not going to lie. I'm going to tell you the truth. I hated it. Because we had kneeling pews. Kneeling pews were these things that came down so that you wouldn't, your knees wouldn't hurt because they were padded. And we would actually get on our knees and pray in the pews. And we'd be there forever. To me, when you're a kid, it seems like forever. We're going to pray forever. And, um, and you know what's kind of sad? That we think that way about prayer. Like, oh, it's this burden. I got to do this. But but it's really, really important. You, it's hard to get what you want if you don't what? If you don't ask. Asking is really important. you think Jesus said anything about asking? He did. He said in this, this time that he spent speaking to thousands of people, he said, ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. And then he goes on to say, how much better is our heavenly father than our earthly father that if we ask him for something he says you wouldn't ask your your dad for bread and he would give you a snake that'd be mean right he's saying god's not like that god's better he says if if you ask for a bow god's gonna get you a bow and if you ask for a, what did you ask for an electric helicopter like a, a drone? Kind of like a drone? That's cool. Um, God, you know, he, he wants to do those things. He says he gives better gifts than, than even our parents give us gifts. But we have to do what? We have to ask. That's right. So that's what we're going to do today. So take some candy. You know what? Probably need to get through that. Take like three. And go back and... I'm um, sorry, parents. Like three? You can share one with your parents or with your, your grandparents or tough choice, isn't it? Ooh, a lot of chocolate today. Oh, bow. That would be a cute gift, a bow. Oh yes. Mm. You can never have enough bows, I suppose. Um, all right. <laughs> I remember one year, my grandma, you know, I, I lack focus, she asked for a red, I thought she said a red bull, so I got her a, a glass bull, like a, she wanted a red bull, like a bowl you put fruit in. Is that funny? 
Something's funny. <laughs> it's like, that's my, it's my, it's not, it's, that's my not so smart grandchild. Got me. A, all right. Um, here's what we're going to do. You're going to help me. You're going to try and help me. Please. This will be the service you guys all talk about. Man, I'm sorry I came on Christmas Eve. Or it's not Christmas Eve. <laughs> it's not even New Year's Eve. It's New Year's Day. It's New Year's Day. So in the fir- it's the first day of the new year, and I've always wanted to have a New Year's Eve prayer service to start the year. I have. Ever since I've been a pastor, I've wanted to do that. And you know what I can never get? Anybody to show up New Year's Eve to pray. And I don't know why. Uh, I don't know what anybody could be doing New Year's Eve. Uh, I know what I was doing last night. We were at our daughter's house for a New Year's Eve party, which had a theme. It was, it was glitter or something like that. It was bizarre. We couldn't figure it out. So we went dressed as, um, I don't know. It was weird. And, and I thought there'd be karaoke. There was no karaoke. I didn't get to sing. And I, it was. It was fun. I played some euchre. Euchre. This church is, is sick with euchre players. You know, I'm thinking now too, because I remember my first first time here I came and visited for a game night and Shirley and and uh, Nancy beat me like a red-headed stepchild they did we were playing no offense if anybody's a red-headed stepchild um, we couldn't win a game and I was playing with Maddie I think Maddie played with me and I thought I actually thought because I was in the army I know a little bit about playing cards and uh, we couldn't win to save our lives. I, like, I think they may have cheated. I don't know. <laughs> there is no way. Plus, that whole, I, they're talking to each other across the table and not saying anything. They just look at each other and know what they're doing. Couldn't win a game. I don't even know if we ever won a single hand. It was just, uh, it was crazy. Anyways. What's that? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, so I imagine what we're going to do today, it's like casting a net. I don't have a net. I wish I had a net. But I, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. It's not like I'm trying to catch something. I'm trying to cover something. You know, so it's like casting a net uh, to cover, to protect, to preserve it. And so that's why I picked this verse. So this is uh, 2 Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. Here's the notion. If we will, if we will do what we can do, God's going to hear our prayers. In other words, I just think of it like this. Humbling myself is kind of clearing the table. Because let's be honest. There's nobody in here who's not busy. I mean, who's not got, you know, stuff going on, who's not, who's, who's a little tired? Who was up past midnight last night? And you're still, Owen? Clayton? <laughs> who's, yeah, I can't, that's just crazy to stay up past midnight. There's no reason to stay up past midnight. You know, nothing good happens after midnight. Um, and uh, anyways, so, Humbling ourselves is clearing the table. And, and it's, it's saying, listen, I'm, I'm going to make time. I'm going I'm to I'm do what I can so I can meet with God. You know, I want to have a good meeting with God. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, you know, put aside those things that we shouldn't be doing. God says, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. That's great news. That's just not good news for Israel as it was being shared at that time in history. That's good news for us. If we get serious about prayer, I think I told you, uh, I do Bible reading just about every day, and then I've been writing my prayers out. I have discovered something. God is answering my prayers, and the only, really, only reason I know that is because I've been writing them out every day. God has been answering my prayers. I don't know, I suppose before that, we just kind of pray, pray in the morning, pray during the day, pray in the night, but as I've been writing them down, I'm like, holy cow. God answered that prayer. God actually did that. God made a way. So I know sometimes, guys, uh, Rhett and Clayton, 
God doesn't always answer our prayers. But he does. He just doesn't do it necessarily in the way that we think he does. Does that make sense? It just, it just doesn't, I don't know, I can't explain it. But as I, so I'm, in, I'm really excited. I'm, I'm believing prayer is more significant than even we think prayer is significant. And so that's what I want to do today. I want to pray. I want to pray with you. I want us to pray together. And so I'm going to challenge you to do some things. And, and, and so what we're going to do right here is we're going to pray. And think about it. The years ahead of us, and I do, I have a lot of pastor friends. They're worried that this is the year that their church is going to close. And the reason they think that is because, you know, COVID came and then some people left because of COVID and they never returned and things got weirder and then all the, the cultural stuff that's going on that's given Christianity a black eye and, 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 and they're thinking maybe, maybe this is the end for the church. It's not the end for the church. It can't be the end for the church because the church actually is the hope of the world. It is the hope. It is the body of Christ active in, in the world. If we stop doing church, we stop being Jesus. We say, well, no, 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 I can, I can do Jesus at home without going to church. You would be wrong. Don't do that. Let's not do that. Let's, let's think about 2023 is going to be the year that we, and this was a good year. This last year was a good year. After coming out of COVID, we had an increase. A lot of cool things happened, you know, and, and maybe we'll share those things at the, at the, um, congregational meeting that we have but there were some profound amazing things you guys remember when we had all those kids that wanted to get baptized in the schmuckers pond after Caden drowned that was that was just I've never seen I've seen some like profound amazing God things that was that was off the charts divine so many good things have happened in this church and are happening Malcolm sang. Okay? Do you know, I don't know if you know this, Malcolm has never sang in front of people, right? Up until like Christmas Eve? You've sang, but not like by, like that. Yeah. It, it, he did fine, right? Was, was Malcolm fine? Yeah. And then, he sang again today. It was awesome. I'm excited. Katrine's like, what about me? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm just teasing. I'm expecting great things this year because God is a God who does great things. Why would we expect a mediocre year? Think about it. Why would we expect this, this year to be like bad or crazy or lousy? That's not my God. That's not your God, right? So I expect good things this year. But I think it begins, and it can, with us casting that net, with us praying. And so here's what I'm going to ask you to do, and I already shared it with the kids. Matthew 7, 7 through 12. Ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. They're all imperatives in the Greek. Always be asking, always be seeking, always be knocking. In other words, that should be our lifestyle. Always be asking, always be seeking, always be knocking. Man, if you've got kids or grandkids, you're always praying. Am I right, moms? You're always praying. Uh, and that's true for dads. But I think moms, you know, they, they tend to see the little ones doing the things that they're doing. Like, oh, Lord, please don't let that happen. Or, you know, it's just, just the nature and I'm glad that God created us and created families and communities that way where we're, we're always praying and we're always asking. We're always, we're always doing that. So that being the case, as we begin 2023 asking, seeking, and knocking, I want to do this. It begins with us praying. And Matthew 18, 20 says this, for where two or three are gathered, I am there. So where two or three, there's more than two or three, God is here. He's in our presence. And so I want to invite you to do something. Now, I'm not going to ask you to do something you feel uncomfortable with. I, I, I put aside the dance portion of the service. And so I'm kidding. I was up too late. Clearly reflected in the cover of the bulletin. Anyways, um, I've got some cards. I just wrote these in my office. And so uh, I have a, like, a little list of things I would like to pray for this year. And that's actually the service. We're going to do a little bit of praying. Then we're going to have communion. And then 
we're going to be done. And so would there be anybody, because I have cards like uh, pray for, it looks like pray pa, but uh, pray for the Ukraine, pray for the world, pray for our country, uh, Millersburg and its people, churches, pastor and staff, churches, people, churches, ministries, pray for the church's resources, things we need, uh, the church's future. I'm going to pray over the prayer list, and then we'll end with the Lord's Prayer. And anything else you want to add, but what, what I was going to do is just see if anybody would be willing to pray out loud for one of these things, and I will give you this card. And then when I get to that in my section of the sermon, you just you can pray from right where you're sitting. Would anybody feel comfortable doing that? Lon! All right. What's that? Okay. Ukraine. <laughs> Give you a hard one. Well, that's two. <laughs> Lois. Oh. Anybody? Anybody? It's a small crowd. Nobody's going to care. You, you know. I know some people worry about, like, people will hear my prayers. God doesn't care. He can figure it out. Anybody? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, help me. Help me. Okay. I'm going to give you that one. I'm going to give you one more. Anybody over here? Daniel, I know you can. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna call you out. I don't know if you know this. Daniel was a pastor, has been a pastor. He's not was, he's been a pastor in his history. Who who raised their hand over here? Well you know what? I'm gonna give you a good one. I'm gonna give you two good ones. You love that one? This happened. That was the one in my hand. That's... I have two left. We're so close. Oh Lord, please help us find somebody who'd be willing to pray for these last two cards who will it be no <laughs> I don't mean that the way that sounded no I need I need new blood new fresh blood <laughs> you know you're feisty today uh, I've got the church, the church's people, the people that are here, and the church's future. Can anybody? Anybody? The Jack. I see Jack back there. You know. I'm going to give you the church's future. I'll hold on to the church's people. I think we're ready to fly. Are you ready to fly? <laughs> All right. Here we go. All right. So we're going to pray. And uh, let's see here. What did I give? We're going to start with praying for the people. Um, and so I'll do that. And then I'll hopefully call out the things that I gave out. So let's go before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we're going to pray for, for the people that are here at Zion. And, and they, are, they are wonderful, beautiful, lovely people. I thank you for them. I thank you for this church, Father God. But I pray specifically for the people, and this is what I pray. I pray that you would bless the work of their hands, that the things that they do, the investments that they're making, the businesses that they have, I pray that you would bless them, you would prosper them, and you would give them favor. I pray for their health. I pray that you would protect them, thank, Lord, from, from the things that could hurt us, the cancers and the, the illnesses and the colds and the flus and the pneumonias and all that stuff and accidents. I just pray for divine protection, a hedge of angels around them, your hand strong upon them, Father God. I pray that, that if they are sick, if there are things going on, and, and, that's, and I just know that because that's true in my own life, I pray for continued healing. I pray that we would feel the sense that you are healing and that you're bringing a restoration to our bodies and to our health. That you would help us regardless of our age with the things that we need, Father God. I pray that you would guide and direct us and help us to grow in our relationship with you, in our relationship with each other. And so I thank you that you're going to do those things, not only now in this moment, but every day for the rest of this year, Father God. You're going to continue to carry us, carry this people here at Zion. 
So who had the future of the church? Who's got that? You go, brother. Thank you, Jack. Who's got its uh, needs and resources? Go ahead, Lois. Thank you, Lois. It's ministries. Who is that? Yes. Thank you. It's pastors, uh, it's pastor and staff. Lord, we lift up to you those who are on our prayer list. We continue to remember Willow Rogerson, who's, who's got cerebral palsy, but we pray that you would help her family and you would help Willow to have a quality of life that is, that to her, she, just, she would know how much you love her and how much her family loves her and all her needs would be met. Continue to pray for healing of the cancer that's in my body uh, and a couple of the other things that, that have been problematic, the back and um, um, another issue, Father God, that I know you're working to take care of. So I thank you for continuing to hold the cancer at bay in my body. I appreciate that. We pray for Paul, uh, attacker, Father God, and I pray for a, a release for him that he could be with you in heaven and not necessarily languishing in a, in a bed, in a, in a nursing home, unable to, to recognize what's going on in his life. I pray for that release, Father God. We continue to pray for Jeff Lechleitner and healing uh, over him. For Bruce Yoder's dad, uh, Levon, I believe, Father God. Pray for continued healing for Levon. And for Molly's mom, Chris, we pray for her continued healing in relation to her heart. 
we, we pray and rejoice that Maggie has had the treatment and is responding well, and we pray for complete remission for her. And I know Levi's not on there, but I continue to pray for his remission as well, Father God. We pray for uh, Don and pray that, that they help get his, the things under control in his heart and mind and that he'll be able to come back and be near us. Uh, we pray for Matt and Terry, both of them, as they are they're under the weather right now, but pray that uh, for their continued healing of the cancers that uh, they have been fighting, that the, that the chemicals and the things that they're, they're taking will work and help uh, heal them, Father God. We pray for little Aria, Lord God, and we pray that she would not only find hope and healing in her heart and mind, but her relationships would be restored with her family, Father God. Uh, I have added my uh, wife's sister's um, significant other James Beltowski's dealing with some health issues and so we pray Lord that you would help help protect him from it being anything severe and that the test would reveal that he's going to be okay we lift up to you the Kritzmans what a wonderful family um, what a matriarch surely was and and yes uh, I know their hearts are breaking um, but Lord we pray for Kurt and Matt and Jane and uh, and Gretchen and, and just the extended family and just help them in this time um, let this time be a time that they're just drawn closer together and and because of it they experience uh, some fresh bonds and some some meaningful relationships and that we'll get to see the continuing power of your ability to minister in people even when we lose somebody that we love and we lift up to you the Judy family. Be with them and care for them, Father God, in this time as they're grieving as well. Who had um, Millersburg? Okay. Who's got, see, what do I have next? Is it state or country? What do you got, Daniel? The world. What do you have? Country. Does anybody have anything else? Okay, we'll save. Uh, you know what? Let's do Susie. Thank you for that, Susie. I, I just am reminded, 
You know, I don't know if people know this. William Wilberforce, he was influential at ending slavery in, in Europe. But the, before that, he actually is responsible for a reclamation or a reclaiming of manners in Europe. And it just, that made me think of, we do, we need to turn from our wicked ways and seek out the Lord. And, and then we can have real, true, meaningful change. And that would be great. But it's happened. It's happened in history where people have, I mean, Europe was so bad. Open prostitution, open drunkenness, people doing things in the streets, children working, um, being chained to equipment. And one man, uh, in fact, um, had made a difference. Um, and, and I know sometimes we think we can't change this world. We can. It can happen. That's the power of God the power of God in, in 11 men you know anyways uh, the world and then Ukraine Your brother. Lon? Is that all the cards? Is there is there anything that we that I have have not covered that we should pray for? I will take take open anything that we should have covered. Okay. Pray for that. Okay, I can add that. Anything else? Everybody's doing, you know, as best they can. I'm going to have, uh, let me pray, we'll pray that, and then uh, we're going to do communion, and then we'll conclude the service. I'm going to save the Lord's Prayer as the very last thing that we do. I always love that. One of the things that has blessed me here is at the end of a consistory meeting, we get up and we do the Lord's Prayer. Um, just the little things that we do that are so profound and so you know, just knit my heart to what you guys the kind of people that you are here um, let me pray for that Lord God we just ask you to bless us as we try to figure out actually I don't know that we have to figure it out you know what we should do to help make this place um, accessible to everybody um, that's really, it's not necessarily that we need any more room or any less room, that just that it's accessible. 
that it would be a place that, that, that if somebody was going to come, they, they would feel like they, they could actually come, that, that if they were handicapped, they'd have to stay home. That, uh, that um, just pray for that. I pray that it would continue to be this, this space on this corner in this community that when people drive by or when people see the light coming through the windows or that they would know that God is at work in this community. And we're here for them. Whether they come here or not, we're here for them. And so, Lord, to do this thing, we would need resources and so many things. But nothing's impossible for you. You're not afraid of large numbers, and you're not afraid of difficult tasks. And so guide us and lead us and direct us in that endeavor. In Jesus' name, amen. So as I ask the elders to come up and help me to prepare for communion, we'll take this, these next cup, this next minute, and I would just like you on your own in the pew just to do this. Um, we don't want to approach the, you know, the communion table with the wrong heart and the wrong mind. And so there should be this time of, of just creating me, Lord, a clean heart, renewing me a right spirit. Help me to humble myself as I'm seeking your face, as I'm, as I'm praying. And God will. If you seek him with all your heart, guess what? You will find him. And so just quietly reflect and ask God to, to do a work in your heart to, to help you to be right, uh, to make you right. Uh, and only God can do that as we approach the communion table. So elders, come on up. And let's... Um I'm so glad we get to do communion today. I forgot that as well. And um, I'm glad. I wish everybody was here, but I'm glad you're here. I feel like I'm surrounded by family and we get to enjoy this meal together. And it's a symbol to remind us of what Jesus did. And so that night, Jesus did. He gathered. He actually sent his disciples out and said, go and prepare a place where we can have this last meal together. And they were all seated very closely together in the room. And he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this bread, it's a symbol of my body. And they didn't understand it completely, but it would be broken for them and it's broken for us. It's not just broken for them, it's for us. And then he also took a cup in the meal and he blessed it as well. And he said, this is a symbol of my blood which will be poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. And you know, I think all the way back to the Passover, they had to pick a lamb and that lamb would be broken and that blood of that lamb would be applied to the door of their home, which was a symbol of everything that was theirs. Everything that they were. And when the, the shadow of death spread across the land, it passed over church if you know Jesus everything passes over us you might think it's going to hurt you it's not it's just an illusion when Shirley closed her eyes she opened them in heaven she saw things that we can only dream of and imagine That's... pray with me Heavenly Father, bless these elements as we partake of them together. Guide us and direct us as only you can. Let them, let them remind us and refresh us and encourage us. In Jesus' name, amen. Just hold on to your element and we'll partake of both the bread and the cup together.
going to have you serve the cup and then we'll come back and we'll do the bread and the cup together. Let's partake of the bread together. And let us drink of the cup together. Thank you, Jesus. Worship team. stand. Our next song is Nothing But the Blood. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my part in this I see. Nothing but the blood of Jesus For my cleansing, this my plea Nothing but the blood of Jesus Oh, precious is the flow That makes me white as snow No other found I know Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not of good that I have done. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow no other found i know nothing but the blood of jesus this is all my hope and peace nothing but the blood of jesus this is all my righteousness Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No 
nothing but the blood of Jesus. You guys can stay right there. Would you play, play, would you pray the Lord's Prayer with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Till we meet again by Thank you guys.